Hello everyone! Today, we will have a new lesson about types, parts, and characteristics of the printer. In computing, a printer is a peripheral device which makes a persistent representation of graphics or text, usually on paper. While most of output is human-readable, Barcode printers are an example of unexpanded use for printers. A printer is used to print document, photos, and anything else that appears on your screen. There are many types of printers, including inkjet, laser, and photo printers. There are even all-in-one printers, which can also scan and copy documents. Let's talk about types of printer. If you're wondering what type of printer might be a good choice for your home or office, then it's a good idea to find out what types of printers are available. Whether you have prior knowledge of printing or not, it's still worth looking at what other options might be out there, as well as some of the most popular options from the past. And for those who don't know anything about printing in general, then it can be extremely confusing to know the difference between the types of printers. Not only this, but it's not easy to tell what type of printer is going to be the best choice for you. Each printer has different pros and cons, which make it more suitable for one task and perhaps less suitable for another task. Generally, printers can be divided up to into different categories depending on their mechanisms. Because of the way they're designed, they may fit into two different categories. For example, an inkjet photo printer is at its core and way they're designed. Inkjet printer but can also be defined by the fact it's made specifically for photographs. So, let's take a look at some of the ways that you can categorize printers. Personal printers. Personal printers are primarily designed to support individual users and may be connected to only a single computer. These printers are designed for low volume and short turnaround print jobs requiring minimal setup time to produce a hard copy of a given document. However, there are generally slow devices ranging from 6 to around 25 pages per minute or ppm, and the cost per page is relatively high. However, this is offset by the on-demand convenience. Some printers can print documents stored on memory cards or from digital cameras and scanners. Next, the network or shared printers. Network or shared printers are designed for high volume, high speed printing. They are usually shared by many users on a network and can print at speeds of 45 to around 100 ppm. The Xerox 9700 could achieve 120 ppm. Virtual Printer A virtual printer is a piece of computer software whose user interface and API resembles that of a printer driver, but which is not connected with a physical computer printer. A virtual printer can be used to create a file which is an image of the data, which would be printed for archival purposes or as an input to another program. For example, to create a PDF or to transmit to another system or user. Barcode printer A barcode printer is a computer peripheral for printing barcode labels or tags that can be attached to or printed directly on physical objects. Barcode printers are commonly used to label cartons before shipment or to label retail items with UPCs or EANs. 
3D Printer a 3D printer is a device for making a three-dimensional object from a 3D model or other electronic data source through a detailed process in which successive layers of material, including plastics, metals, food, cement, wood, and other materials, are laid down under computer control. It is called a printer by analogy with an ancient printer which produces a two-dimensional document by a similar process of depositing a layer of ink on paper. 3D printers a whole new level in comparison to the printers that I've just talked about. And while they're not the same thing, it's only fair to discuss 3D printers as well. 3D printing is generally described as creating a material object through computing control, allowing us to create physical form by a layered system. One of the most exciting developments in printing technology history, 3D printing is becoming more affordable for professional and domestic users. Modern 3D printers are capable of producing 3D objects and items using high-quality resin. The advantages are 3D prints, limitless possibilities, and capacity for full customization, while the disadvantages are high initial cost, high resin cost, and still developing technology. There are modern print technology printers. The following printing technologies are routinely found in modern printers, such as toner-based printers, liquid inkjet printers, solid ink printers, dye sublimation printers, and thermal printers. Let's talk about the toner-based printers. First, the laser printer. A laser printer rapidly produces high-quality text and graphics. As with digital photocopiers and multifunction printers, laser printers employ a serographic printing process but differ from analog photocopiers in that the image is produced by the direct scanning of a laser beam across the printer's photoreceptor. The laser printer was developed by Xerox in the 1960s when the idea of using a laser to draw images onto a copier drum was first considered. Laser printers are still widely used in large offices as they are traditionally more efficient than inkjet printers. A type of printer that utilizes a laser beam to produce an image on a drum. The light of the laser alters the electrical charge on the drum wherever it hits. The drum is then rolled through a reservoir of toner, which is picked up by the charged portions of the drum. Finally, the toner is transferred to the paper through a combination of heat and pressure. This is also the way copy machines work. The advantages of a laser printer are more cost-effective than inkjet printers, increases productivity, high print speed, higher paper capacity, often expandable with paper trays, finishers, and grows with your business. While the disadvantages, it may require short warm-up times, larger footprint, and high voltage usage leads to small carbon emissions. Another tone-based printer is the lead printer. Lead printer which uses an array of leads instead of a laser to cause toner adhesion to the print drum. Lead printers are similar to laser printers but use a light emitting diode rather than a laser to create images on the print drum or belt. Due to their fewer moving parts, Lead printers are often considered more efficient and reliable than laser printers. Our most popular lead printers are produced by OK. The advantages of lead printers are 
reliable and efficient, cheaper to manufacture than laser printers, and often include free warranty extensions. Generally, lead printers work in a very similar way to one another. That's why when you see them for sale, they are generally grouped into the same bracket as one another. Of course, the glaring difference between the two is the fact that laser printers use a laser, while lead printers emit a ray of light that burns an image in a different way. Aside from this different in tools, the method used by both types of printer is very similar. Let's proceed to the liquid inkjet printers. Inkjet printers operate by propelling variably sized droplets of liquid ink onto almost any size page. They are the most common type of computer printer used by consumers. When we're talking about printers today, generally we're comparing two different types, inkjet and laser. They are both effective in their own way. Inkjet printers are likely to be a better choice for people using printers at home, while laser printers are better for business and office use. The names of each type of printing are pretty self-explanatory. Inkjet printing is just spraying or shading tiny drops of ink onto a sheet of paper to give an image. They generally use tones of tiny little jets to shoot ink onto the paper or whatever material they are printing onto. Different types of inkjet printers generally work in different ways. For example, most Canon use their bubble jet technology to heat the ink until it explodes, whereas other companies use pressure to force the ink onto the paper. The reason that inkjet printers become so popular is because they have the ability to do things in a much finer detail. Before, when companies were using dot matrix printers, you would probably get around 60 dots per inch. With inkjet printers, most of them print at 10 times this, or often even more than that. So, their accuracy is the key to why they have become so popular. A type of printer that works by spraying ionized ink at a sheet of paper. Magnetized plates in the ink's path direct the ink onto the paper in the desired shapes. Inkjet printers are capable of producing high-quality print approaching that produced by laser printers. A typical inkjet printer provides a resolution of 600 dots per inch, although some newer models offer higher resolutions. Overall, inkjet printers are likely to be the best choice for the majority of people. If you want something to use at home, an inkjet is the perfect choice. What about solid ink printers? Solid ink printers, also known as phase change ink or hot melt ink printers, are a type of thermal transfer printer, graphic sheet printer, or 3D printer. They use solid sticks, crayons, pearls, or granular ink materials. Common inks are CMYK colored ink, similar in consistency to candle wax, which are melted and fed into a piezo crystal operated print head. A thermal transfer print head jets the liquid ink on a rotating oil coated drum. The paper then passes over the print drum at which time the images is immediately transferred or transfixed to the page. Next, the dye sublimation printers. Dye sublimation printers ever wondered how they print ID cards or t-shirts? Well, for this, they'll use a dye sublimation printer. This is essentially a computer printer 
often larger than a regular printer to custom needs that transfers dyes onto various cheap red materials like plastic, cotton, through a heat and dye method. Essentially, it's a heat press which imprints the dye onto whatever material necessary. This kind of method is generally used for things like ID cards because it makes the image less vulnerable to scratches and generally more long-lasting. It is a type of printer which employs a printing process that uses heat to transfer dye to a medium such as plastic card, printer paper, or poster paper. A dye sublimation printer or dye subprinter is a printer that employs a printing process that uses heat to transfer dye to a medium such as plastic card, paper, or canvas. The process is usually to lay one color at a time using a ribbon that has color panels. Dye subprinters are intended primarily for high quality color applications, including color photography, and are less well suited for text. While once the province of high end print shops, dye sublimation printers are now increasingly used as dedicated consumer photo printers. How about thermal printers? Thermal printers are still commonly used nowadays, but you're not going to come across them much if you're looking for something for your home. They're generally used for receipts like ATM receipts. Why? Well, because they're generally faster and they use much less power than a regular printer. So for convenience, they're a much better option. They work by using a special thermosensitive paper and essentially print onto the paper through a heat source which changes the image on the paper by burning the imprint onto the paper. It is a type of printer that produces a printed image by selectively heating coated thermochromic paper or thermal paper as it is commonly known. When the paper passes over the thermal print head, the coating turns black in the areas where it is heated which then produce an image. Thermal printers work by selectively heating regions of the special heat-sensitive paper. Monochrome thermal printers are used in cash registers, ATMs, gasoline dispensers, and some older, inexpensive box machines. Colors can be achieved with special papers and different temperatures and heating rates for different colors. These colored sheets are not required in black and white output. One example is zinc. How about the obsolete and special purpose printing technologies? The following technologies are either obsolete or limited to special applications, though most were at one time in widespread use such as impact printers, typewriter-derived printers, teletypewriter-derived printers, daisy wheel printers, dot matrix printers, line printers, liquid ink electrostatic printers, and platters. Let's talk about impact printers. Impact printers rely on forcible impact to transfer ink to the media. The impact printer uses a print head that either hits the surface of the ink ribbon, pressing the ink ribbon against the paper, or similar to the action of a typewriter, or less commonly, hits the back of the paper, pressing the paper against the ink ribbon. All but the dot matrix printer rely on the use of fully formed characters, letter forms that represent each of the characters 
that the printer was capable of printing. In addition, most of these printers were limited to monochrome or sometimes two-color, printing in a single typeface at one time. Although bolding and underlining of text could be done by overstriking, that is, printing two or more impressions either in the same character position or slightly offset. Impact printers varieties include typewriter derived printers, teletype derived printers, decimal printers, dot matrix printers, and line printers. Dot matrix printers remain in common use in businesses where multi part forms are printed. An overview of impact printing contains a detailed description of many of the technologies used. The typewriter derived printers. Several different computer printers were simply computer controllable versions of existing electric typewriters. The Freedom FlexoWriter and IBM Selectric based printers were the most common examples. The FlexoWriter printer with a conventional type bar mechanism, while the Selectric used IBM's well known golf ball printing mechanism. In either case, the letter form then struck a ribbon which was pressed against the paper, printing one character at a time. The maximum speed of the selectric printer was 15.5 characters per second. Next, the teletype printer derived printers. The common teleprinter could easily be interfaced with a computer and become very popular except for those computers manufactured by IBM. Some models use a type box that was positioned in the X and Y axis by a mechanism and the selected letter form was struck by a hammer. Others use a type cylinder in a similar way as the selectric typewriters use their type ball. In either case, the letter form then struck a ribbon to print the letter form. Most teleprinters operated at 10 characters per second, although a few achieved 15 CPS. Next, lazy wheel printers. Daisy wheel printers operate in much the same fashion as a typewriter. A hammer strikes a wheel with petals, the daisy wheel. Each petal containing a letter form at its tip. The letter form strikes a ribbon of ink, depositing the ink on the page and thus printing a character. By rotating the daisy wheel, Different characters are selected for printing. These printers were also referred to as letter quality printers because they could produce a text which was as clear and crisp as a typewriter. The fastest letter quality printers printed at 30 characters per second. Next, the dot matrix printers. The term dot matrix printer is used for impact printers that use a matrix of small pins to transfer ink to the page. The advantage of dot matrix over other impact printers is that they can produce graphical images in addition to text. However, the text is generally of poorer quality than impact printers that use letter forms. That matrix printers can be broadly divided into two major classes, ballistic wire printers and stored energy printers. That matrix printers can either be character-based or line-based. That is a single horizontal series of pixels across the page, referring to the configuration of the print head. That matrix printers are the oldest 
established type of printer still available on the market. Images and text are drawn out in tiny dots when a print head strikes an ink soaked cloth against the paper in the required pattern or formation. A type of impact printer that produces characters and illustrations by striking pins against an ink ribbon to print closely spaced dots in the appropriate shape. Dot matrix printers are relatively expensive and do not produce high quality output. However, they can print to multi phase forms, that is, carbon copies, something laser and inkjet printers cannot do. Let's talk about the line printers. Line printers print an entire line of a text at a time. Four principal designs exist. Drum printers, where a horizontally mounted rotating drum carries the entire character set of the printer repeated in each printable character position. The IBM 1132 printer is an example of a drum printer. Drum printers are also found in adding machines and other numeric printers or POS. The dimensions are compact as only a dozen characters need to be supported. Chain or train printers where the character set is arranged multiple times around a leg chain or a set of character slugs in a truck traveling horizontally past the print line. The IBM 1403 is perhaps the most popular and comes in both chain and train varieties. The bond printer is a later variant where the characters are embossed on a flexible steel band. The LP27 from Digital Equipment Corporation is a band printer. Bar printers where the character set is attached to a solid bar that moves horizontally along the print line such as the IBM 1443. A fourth design used mainly on very early printers such as the IBM 402 features independent type bars, one for each printable position. Each bar contains the character set to be printed. The bars move vertically to position the character to be printed in front of the print hammer. Comb printers, also called line matrix printers, represent the fifth major design. These printers are a hybrid of dot matrix printing and line printing. In these printers, a comb of hammers prints a portion of a row of pixels at one time such as every 8 pixel. By shifting the comb back and forth slightly, the entire pixel row can be printed, continuing the example is just 8 cycles. The paper then advances and the next pixel row is printed. Because far less motion is involved than in a conventional dot matrix printer, these printers are very fast compared to dot matrix printers and are competitive in speed with form character line printers while also being able to print dot matrix graphics. The Printronics P7000 series of line matrix printers are still manufactured as of 2013. Let's proceed to the liquid ink electrostatic printers. Liquid ink electrostatic printers use a chemical coated paper, which is charged by the print head according to the image of the document. The paper is passed near a pool of liquid ink with the opposite charge. The charged areas of the paper attract the ink and thus form the image. This process was developed from the process of electrostatic copying. Color reproduction is very accurate, and because there is no heating, the scale distortion is less than 
0.1%. All laser printers have an accuracy of 1%. Worldwide, most survey offices use this printer before color inkjet platters became popular. Liquid ink electrostatic printers were mostly available in 36 to 54 inches or 910 to 1370 millimeters with and also six color printing. These were also used to print large billboards. It was first introduced by Versatech, which was later bought by Xerox. 3M also used to make these printers. Next, the platters. Pen-based platters were an alternate printing technology once common in engineering and architectural firms. Pen-based platters rely on contact with the paper, but not impact per se. And special purpose pens that are mechanically run over the paper to create text and images. Since the pens output continuous lines, they were able to produce technical drawings of higher resolution than was achievable with that matrix technology. Some platters used roll pad paper and therefore had a minimal restriction on the size of the output in one dimension. These platters were capable of producing quite sizable drawings. It is a large device used to print large posters and documents. There are also other types of printers. A number of other sorts of printers are important for historical reasons or for special purposes, such as multifunction printers or all-in-one printers, photo printer, wireless printer, and A3 printers. Let's learn what are multifunction printers or all-in-one printers. These are sometimes known as all-in-one printers. Multifunction printers are often capable of performing printing, copying, scanning, and faxing tasks. This can simplify the completion of multiple tasks within an office or domestic environment with no need for more than one unit. The advantages, more cost efficient than buying multiple devices, more compact than buying multiple devices, perform numerous tasks simultaneously, and more power efficient than implementation of numerous devices. While the disadvantages, it can restrict usage time available for larger work groups. How about photo printers? Photo printer is a type of printer used for printing photographs. Wireless printers. A wireless printer uses a wireless network connection to print from different devices. This allows users to send documents to the printer from computers, smartphones, and tablets without having to connect them via cable or transfer files between devices beforehand. Wireless printers are also known as Wi-Fi printers as they often use wireless networks to receive communication. Other technologies used are Bluetooth, Personal Area Network or PAN, Near Field Communication or NFC, Infrared, and Cloud. This makes printing quicker and easier, particularly for those with mobile devices. Users can send documents instantly. For example, they could take a photograph on a smartphone and print without having to connect devices. Last types of printers is the A3 printer. Capable of printing on A2 sheets, A3 printers are well suited to business and domestic settings 
which require large-scale prints. A3 printers often have options to produce other size prints and have numerous input trays, simplifying the process. They are also available with both laser and inkjet technology. The advantages of A3 printer are larger print size, wider range of options, and allows you to bring outsourced print runs back in-house. While the disadvantages, it's higher initial cost and larger footprint. Let's proceed to the parts of the printer. All printers share some common components regardless of the specific printer type and manufacturer. Take a moment to examine your printer and look for some handy items as labeled in the next slides. This is the first photo. Let's talk about its parts of the printer. Paper feed. The paper feed is where you store the paper that the printer eventually prints on. Manual or envelope feeder. Fancier printers may have a special slot, tray, or fold-out thing used to manually feed special papers or envelopes. Ink or toner replacement. Printers don't go on printing forever. At some point, you need to feed with a tin more ink. Control panel. You use this panel to control your printer. Memory card reader. Many photo printers have a place where you can directly plug in your digital camera's memory card. Paper output tray. The printed paper comes out and stack up in the output tray. Next, the second photo. It has the part of paper support, paper support extension, edge guides, printer cover, sheet feeder, automatic roll paper cutter connector, output tray, and output tray extension. The functions are the paper support supports the loaded paper. The paper support extension supports longer paper that is loaded in the sheet feeder. Edge guides help load the paper straight. Adjust the left edge guide to fit the width of your paper. Printer cover covers the printing mechanism open only when stalling or replacing in cartridges. Sheet feeder holds the blank paper and automatically feeds the paper during printing. Automatic roll paper cutter connector connects the automatic roll paper cutter. Next, output tray receives the ejected paper while the output tray extension supports the ejected paper. The last photo is all about control panel. Control panel controls various printer functions. See the next slides for details. For the parts of the printer, such as the control panel, first the buttons, The power button turns the printer on and off, clears the printer's memory if pressed twice while the power is on. To turn up the printer, hold down the power button until the light goes out. Next, the paper button loads or ejects paper, 
resumes printing if pressed after a paper out error or double feed error. The ink button. The ink button moves the print head to the ink cartridge replacement position. It turns the print head to its home position after ink cartridge replacement and performs print head cleaning if held down for 3 seconds when the ink out light is off. Next, the roll paper without the cutter button. It prints a cutting guideline and feeds roll paper to a position where it can be easily removed from the sheet fed feeder if pressed after printing. Feeds roll paper to the printing position if pressed after cutting the paper and feeds roll paper in reverse to a position where it can be easily removed from the roll paper feeder if pressed for 3 seconds. Next, the roll paper with the cutter button with driver setting paper saving cut or normal cuts. It cuts roll paper at the position that is selected and ejects it if pressed after printing. Then feeds roll paper to the printing position automatically. While with driver setting manual cut, cuts roll paper with a margin and ejects it if pressed after printing. Then feeds roll paper to the printing position automatically. Next, how about the parts of the printer control panel according to the lights? The power light on when the printer is on. Flashing when the printer is receiving data. Printing, replacing an ink cartridge, charging ink, or cleaning the print head. The paper out lights. On when the printer is out of paper or when a double feed error is detected. Load paper into the sheet feeder, then press the paper button to resume printing. Flashing when the paper is jammed. Take all of the paper out of the feeder, then reload the paper if the light continues to flash. Turn up the printer and gently pull all the paper out of the printer. The ink out lights. Flashing when the ink cartridge is nearly empty. On when the ink cartridge is empty. Replace the ink cartridge, auto black, cyan, magenta, yellow, light cyan, light magenta, light black, or matte black. Flashing when the print head moves to the ink cartridge replacement position. Let's learn the another part of the printer based on the photo. It has the roll paper feeder, roll paper inch guides, manual feed slot, roll paper holder, roll paper knob, IEE 3094 interface cable connector, USB interface cable connector, RLN interface cable connector, and adjust lever. For the parts of this kind of printer, the roll paper feeder holds the roll paper and automatically feeds it after holding the roll paper with your hand for 3 seconds. The roll paper edge guides helps load the roll paper straight. Adjust the edge guide to fit the width of your paper. The manual feed slot feeds the thick paper. Roll paper holder attaches to the printer and holds the roll paper, while the roll paper knob turns to roll up the roll paper. IEEE 3094 interface cable connector used to connect the IEEE cable to the computer and the printer. The USB interface cable connector 
used to connect the USB cable to the computer and the printer, while the parallel interface cable connector used to connect the parallel cable to the computer and the printer. And last, adjust lever part, adjust the distance between the print head and the paper to prevent smearing. Then let's, uh, let us learn characteristics of the printer. When looking at printers, people often want to know which one is best or how to decide on which printer that you should get. There are various different ways that you're going to want to decide on which is the right printer for you or how to tell which one may be better than the other. So here are some of the specifications and characteristics that can help you to tell the difference between different printer types. First characteristics of the printer, the color versus monochrome. Of course, one of the first things you'll need to know about the printer is whether you have the ability to print in color. If you don't need a color printer, then it can be worth looking at the monochrome printer instead. Next, the printer color control languages. Most printers other than the line printers accept control characters or unique character sequences to control various printer functions. These may range from shifting from lower to upper case or from black to red ribbon on typewriter printers to switching fonts and changing character sizes and colors on raster printers. Early printer controls were not standardized, with each manufacturer's equipment having its own set. The IBM personal printer data stream became a commonly used command set for that matrix printers. Today, most printers accept one or more page description languages. Lace printers with greater processing power frequently offer support for variants of Hewlett Packard's printer command language, script or XML paper specification. Most inkjet devices support manufacturer proprietary, such as ESKP. The diversity in mobile platforms have led to various standardization error efforts around device PDLs such as the Printer Working Group PWG cluster. Next characteristic is about the printing speed. The speed of early printers was measured in units of characters per minute or CPM for character printers or lines per minute, or LPM for the line printers. Modern printers are measured in pages per minute, or PPM. These measures are used primarily as a marketing, marketing tool and are not as well standardized as toner yields. Usually, pages per minute refers to sparse monochrome office documents rather than dense pictures with which usually print much more slowly, especially color images. Speeds and in PPM usually apply to a per paper in most countries in the world, and letter paper size about 6% shorter in North America. The resolution or DPI essentially the resolution is how many dots that can be imprinted per inch of page. This doesn't matter too much for regular printing, but you'll notice there's a big difference with photographs and other images. So, if you see something like 300 dpi, this stands for the amount of dots per inch, which higher numbers are necessary for in details imagery. Type quality. Another way that you might see printer quality measure is by the quality of type, meaning how well the letters are represented on a page. Top printers will have letter quality printing. 
but lower range printers might not have this. Next, the warm up. Printers usually vary drastically in the amount of time that they take to warm up and actually be ready for printing. It's usual for any printer to take some time to warm up, but newer printers generally take a lot less time than older printers, which may have taken a long time to warm up in the past. The last characteristics of the printer to consider, wireless. The vast majority of newer printers that are being released will be made for wireless printing with AirPrint or with any other kind of wireless printing. So that's all the ideas or learnings that are referring to the type, parts, and characteristics of the printer. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.